Hi, welcome back. I'm Ashley, and today we have with us Lisa Gulisarian, who is also an assistant instructor here at UT. She's taught 306, and she's teaching rhetoric 309K this semester, and she is an expert on visual rhetoric. So Lisa's going to share some more information with you all about visual rhetoric today. I'll turn it over to you, Lisa. Thanks, Ashley. So today we're going to be looking at a video, and we're also going to be looking at a political cartoon. And together we will model the way that you can look at the different elements in a video or in a cartoon or any other visual argument. Um, so first we will look at a video together. I was once a boy who dreamed of becoming a famous soccer player. Today, I have a different dream. And I have something more important than courage. I have patience. During the past two years, I've been very inspired to see a multicultural dream. The Seattle Saunders FC take the city of Seattle by a storm. Each of the players in this team won an opportunity based on their talent and efforts, where some, coming from other parts of the world, were welcomed and embraced by a new society. In the other side, today thousands of young, talented, undocumented students all across the United States are currently struggling to earn recognition for their dreams. We are talking about key players who follow their passion, who follow their heart, and never give up. My name is Alonso Chejade, and I am a candidate for the Development, Relief, and Education for Alien Minors Act, the Dream Act. I ask for your support, because supporting the Dream Act Supporting a great team. Okay, so the video that we just watched had a lot of elements of visual rhetoric that are super important. So, the things that we can think about as we were watching this video are we can think about sound. So for example, what was the music that was playing in this video? Was it sad, somber, interesting, uh, happy? What sorts of music in this video? Well, as we were listening, you can notice that it started off as a slow, slow, somber music. But then it ended up um, crescendoing to a very triumphant, um, triumphant and happy, almost uh, you could say uplifting music. So just the music itself is a way that the argument is being made. Actually, let's even talk about the argument. What argument is being made here? You can think about the argument as um, something in favor of the DREAM Act. So we have the narrator who is a candidate for the DREAM Act, and he is in favor. And the argument that he's using here is that it is what? Yes, exactly. It, um, it improves the, the immigrant um, status, and it, and it improves it in one specific way. It improves it in terms of education and, and success. So at the end of the what were some shots that were very important to making this argument? Um, we can see at the very, very end of the video, um, there is a cut shot, and a cut shot is when it goes from one scene to the next scene. And we have a cut shot where, um, in the video, we have him running towards us in his soccer outfit. And then that transitions into this cut shot here where he's wearing a suit. And what is the suit itself? What does that uh, conjure up for us as viewers? What do we think when we think, okay, suit? Often it brings up these ideas of success, um, you know, businessmen wear suits or uh, successful um, entrepreneurs, things like that. So we have this uh, image of him transitioning into a suit. So um, that's a very important visual argument that is being made. And it's something that can't really be done when you're thinking about a, a written argument. So in a written argument, we wouldn't have the music. We wouldn't be able to, at this point, transition from um, him in a shot in a, his soccer um, outfit to him into a shot uh, wearing a suit while the narration is still ongoing. So this is, you can see that there are multiple layers with visual 
rhetoric that we need to pay attention to. So things like music, even colors. So what sort of colors were in this video? As you can see at the end, we have bright greens, and he's wearing a bright blue tie. Again, those sorts of elements are things that you can pay attention to as you're looking at a piece of um, argument being made visually. Um, so we can now move on to our next argument, which is a political cartoon. And with that one, um, there are a couple things that we can pay attention to. So this is just a political cartoon. It was in a newspaper in the Denver Post um, in December of 2010. Um, so as we can see, there are multiple elements going on here. So as we were talking about last time with the video, we can look at colors, we can look at the way the composition of this image is, is um, the way this image is composed. So let's look at the different elements. First off, the colors are quite bright, but we have a very, very dark element here. Your eye is, is drawn to this element, the really huge elephant here we have in the corner. Um, another thing we notice immediately is that when we read what the father is saying, we can see his facial expression. So what is the facial expression here on the father's face? We see that he's happy, he's very, um, he's hopeful, and he's telling his son something is good is going to come out of their um, coming to the U.S. So we see the father there, very happy, but then above him we see this, the elephant's hoof is going to definitely uh, crush these two um, people who are coming to the U.S. And the, the, then we can see that the face, the facial expression on the father's face, um, then that is a little ironic. So he is not able to see what's coming up. He is not able to see what the truth of the matter is in this situation. And for that reason, we, we feel pity for him, right? Just remember, um, with pathos, we feel pity for this character here, just from that facial expression. Um, we also see the facial expression on the child's face, which is one of fear and trepidation. Again, we're going to want to feel pity or sadness for these characters just from their facial expressions. Um, of course, whenever we get uh, children, we are often also meant to feel um, compassion for whoever is um, part of that child's life. So here, we feel compassion for these two characters. Um, and then let's go back to this elephant. Again, the elephant, why use an elephant here? What would be the reason for using an elephant? Actually, so when we think of American politics, the elephant is always a sign, uh, it's sort of a shorthand for Republican Party. We have the donkey for the Democrats, and we have the elephant for the Republicans. So here, specifically, just by using an elephant, we get the author showing us, we get the cartoonist showing us that what he's criticizing exactly is the Republicans who are not giving a chance to this family. Um, and all, another thing we get is the elephant, we don't get the elephant's face. We don't get the elephant, he's cut out of the frame. And what he tell, the elephant is saying is dream on. So what we're feeling when we're seeing this image of the elephant is specifically, we, we, we don't want to be on the elephant side. At this point, we, we can't really identify with this elephant because he's cut off, he's a monolith, and he's saying something that's quite, quite mean when you, when you look at it in the context of this um, image. So again, the argument that's being made here is being made through the visuals. We have the elephant as a representative of the Republican Party, and we have a very um, compassionate family there that is being um, cr going to be crushed by the Republican Party here. Um, so again, it's being done through the visuals. This argument is being done through the visuals. Um, and I think uh, we can now talk about the implications for writing um, using visual rhetoric. So with visual rhetoric, you can think about it um, as you're writing your rhetorical analyses, you put the different elements that um, a piece of argument is, um, a, an argument is making visually. So you can look at the different elements like color, um, you can think about shots that are being made, what 
order things are being put in, um, even slow motion shots or fast motion shots. Why would the author or why would the creators of this video or cartoon, why would they use those elements? Um, so you can think about those sorts of things. But in terms of writing, when you're writing yourself, think about the ways that you can use visual rhetoric yourself. So even things like font, why would we use Times New Roman font in size 12? That's another way for us to show that we have credibility. Instead of using something like, you know, curls or, um, you know, the cartoon font. So when you're turning in a paper, you want it to look professional, you want it to look like you've shown um, effort and that you've put some time into it. And you want it to look, again, professional. So we use the very specific um, fonts that we use for academic writing, usually this Times New Roman font. So you can even think about visual rhetoric in that way, even in small things like your own papers. Um, so that's, that's it for today for visual rhetoric. I hope you've had a good time with me.